Welcome to this week's episode. It's been a bit crazy around here, um, from beach boats to building rudders and installing the rudders while we're still in the water. We've been getting a lot of stuff done. Um, so we are preparing the boat to move elsewhere. So this episode, there's a few different jobs that we've been up to um, to get prepared for that. Hope you enjoy. Hi, we are Erica and Davey, an adventurous, slightly crazy couple who has taken on the challenge that is a hurricane damaged catamaran. We have come so far and are beyond happy to be floating once more. Subscribe to our channel to follow our journey. Take a chance. You never know how perfect something may turn out to be. All right, so today is Wednesday. Um, it's still supposed to be a bit rainy today, just looking up at the clouds. Um, we're in a bit of a sunny spot, which is awesome. So we're still able to get some sun to the solar panels. So we shouldn't be too hard done by. Um, but as it still is potentially rainy, we've decided to do some inside jobs. So what's the next one? Gonna keep cracking on with the inside rainy day jobs. But what I've decided this morning, so we do actually have a Garmin chart plotter. Um, there was one on the boat when we first got the boat, but it didn't work. So we contacted Garmin, it wasn't an old unit, and they said it was slightly out of, what was it called, like guarantee time? Yeah. Um, but they offered us a half price unit, um, so we sent the old one in, and they sent us another one for half price. So that was great customer service from Garmin. But we haven't installed it, we've had it for a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we normally use the iPad at the helm. Um, this boat originally was installed up here on the navigation station. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that again. So on longer passages, overnight passages, on the inside we've got one screen here and then the outside we'll have the, uh, the Navionics. And also then it gives us two lots of different types of maps and stuff like that. So, we've got to try and get this to work. I thought at the same time as well, what I'll do is I will tidy up a bit behind because I've got, a bit, Ooh, of, a, I've got a bit of a rat's nest going on in here. Everything is isolated. You see everything's taped off, everything's marked, but I can make it look a lot prettier. Um, also do a bit of cleaning in there. Still a little bit dusty from when we were in the boatyard. So stick with me. What we're gonna do first is test the unit as I don't wanna take all this apart and find out the thing doesn't work. It is a reconditioned unit. I'm just gonna tie this open so it doesn't get closing on me. There we go. Can I do one thing first though? Oh, I know what you need to do, don't you? Erica's got this thing about peeling plastic off of stuff. It's just so satisfying. All right, that's Erica happy. <laughs> All right, so time to test it. Um, I've got some cables around here that did go to it. So this is a brand new um, power cable for the Garmin unit. Um, I actually did install this before we got the replacement because I could see on the end there was a slightly corroded burnt end and that's probably what caused the failure in the first place. So this is a new one that I installed about a year ago. And also here we have a connection for the NEMA 2000, um, which is like a backbone which gets everything to talk to each other i.e. the um, autopilot, our depth sounder, uh, speed over water. We don't have wind instruments at the moment. Obviously, they were gone with the mast. <laughs> um, this used unit also used to have an AIS system. So there's a couple of, uh, well, there's a power cable for the AIS unit and also a NEMA 2000 connector. But we don't have that, unfortunately. But luckily on our VHF, we do have a very basic AIS receiver. So we can see on there if something's getting close to us, a bigger ship or something. But in the future, I would actually like to replace the Garmin one, but that's not on the budget at the moment. Oh, it fires up. Engage autopilot, so that means it's talking to the autopilot. That's great. So I'll have to go down in both engine rooms and check that there's nothing obscuring the, um, what's it called, the hydraulic ram before I play with that. All right, anyway, it looks like it is working. So let's go to home. We've got full signal to satellites, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's looking a hell of a lot better at the moment. I know I've still got some tidying up to do back here. Um, I'll move on to that in a moment, but what I want to do is actually install the screen. Um, so I've actually put a bit of starboard on the front of here to cover up all the old holes and stuff for the stuff that's missing. Um, so the new GPS unit is actually going to go up here. So 
Sorry, Dad, your pictures are going to have to come off the wall. We're going to find somewhere else for those. I'm going to remove this piece of starboard. I've marked out the size. That's the original place where the chart plot used to be. So let's remove the Victron, remove the pictures, cut that out, and then put it back together. And then we'll continue on with tidying up the rest of the wiring because everything will be in the right place. There it is. Look at that, babe. That looks great. Warning all information is presented reference only. So do not crash. <whistles> looks like it. GPS heading 11. I'm going to see what it says on the phone. Not even close. But then again, it doesn't have time to calibrate. The heading on here is 72 degrees. It's just about right there on the compass and on the, G the screen there, but it probably all needs to calibrate together. I need to read the instructions. I've never used that thing before. Anyway, we've got plenty of time to read instructions. That's what evenings are for and rainy mornings are for. But that's good. So what we need to do now then, guys, is still a bit of a mess in the back here. While we're here, we might as well get it all sorted. But that is looking so much better than it did before. So much better. Um, but I do want to get further back in there. There's a lot of stuff that's not connected. Um, we've got things like wash down pumps. Um, there is electric toilets. There is some lighting that we don't have connected here. So there's a lot of loose ends that aren't going anywhere. Everything's now isolated, so it's all safe. There's also cables there for four speakers, like, yeah, but we don't even have a stereo thing. We have a Bluetooth speaker. Um, I'm not going to get rid of the wiring. I'm just going to tidy it up and make sure it's all good and safe. And, uh, should be happy days and I can move on to something else. I do also want to go through all my bilge pumps because um, at the moment it looks like everything's getting two lots of power. I believe one is for the float switch and one is for constant power but I want everything to be on constant float switch power on this boat. So I'm going to go through that anyway. I know where all the cables are. There are attachments here, four of them and here at the top as well. So that'll be the next step. So now that the Garmin is installed and it's a bit sunnier <laughs> and we have the rudders installed we can connect up the hydraulic autopilot. So on here, I've now connected everything up to the rudders. So this is the rudder post, and this is the steering arm. This is the steering rod, which goes across to the opposite rudder. Um, you notice this is the ram here. So everything's connected up now, and hopefully Erica is going to test it for us. All right, so it is on. It's waiting for autopilot controller to turn on. So we're going to have autopilot. Oh, there it is. Look at that. It's working. So another long overdue task that we wanted to get done was finally tightening the trampoline, tensioning it properly. When we first installed it, we wanted to let it stretch out a little bit. Um, so we called in the troops to help us with this process. I had a lot of fun supervising this. There was a lot of jokes going on quite comical um, but now the trampoline is nicely tensioned much better than it was before all right so as we are preparing to move this vessel soon ish I'm starting to go through all of our stuff and make sure everything's clean and um, so I pulled out my handy dandy little uh, washing machine um, and it's awesome I don't know if I've showed you this yet but it's super cool check it out It doesn't use too much water, it doesn't use a lot of power at all, um, and it washes the clothes really, really well. It's super handy. And then it also has this spin cycle over here. So when you use the spin, it comes out nearly dry. So it's awesome. If you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, you would have seen that I went to Grand Cayman last week. So a lot of people have been asking, are we going to be taking the job offer in the Cayman Islands? The answer to that is no. Um, so I did fly back last week and I flew in on, the, on Tuesday and I flew out on the Thursday. So just enough time to pick up all our belongings. So now even more organization as we've got to find homes for all this stuff. So the main reason we decided not to take the job in Grand Cayman is because to import the boat there is so expensive. Why do we have to import the boat? So once you've been in the country for three months, you're expected to import the boat into the Cayman Islands. We did this on the last boat that we had, but we only bought the Catalina 36 for 15 grand. So the 11% on that was only 1500, so it wasn't too bad. Um, but on this boat, the fact that we've now owned it for a little bit, we have upgraded it quite a bit, as you know. Um, they might want a new recent survey before we do the import process, so it could be even more money than what we originally thought. Um, 
plus there's a few other issues with going that direction. Um, so we've decided not to go to Grand Cayman. It was fun to go back and visit all of our friends though for only that short couple days. Um, it felt kind of surreal going back there. Things haven't changed too much. Same bartenders were on at our local pub. Um, some of the same staff were working at our old job. So it was kind of interesting to see what's happened there. As for where we are going to be going, we are going to be headed to the Bahamas. Um, one of the main reasons for that is we want to get Davy a B1, B2 visa. So potentially we could go to the States, go to Puerto Rico again, and USBIs. So Nassau is a place that does the B1, B2 visas, issues them. Um, unfortunately, here in the Dominican Republic, they haven't restarted issuing these visas because of COVID. Um, so the Bahamas, why not? Um, crystal clear waters and we'll be able to enjoy that a little bit. So as you've seen so far in this video, we've been doing so many odd jobs. So we've got the Garmin installed, we've got the autopilot hooked up now that the rudders are installed. Um, we've been cleaning everything. Now we're gonna organize all of our belongings that we got back from storage. This includes the drone, so we're so excited to have that back. Um, so washing and cleaning everything, um, organizing, finding homes for stuff. But the stuff that we do need to still do. Um, so we need to do our final provision, get supplies um, in Porta Plata. We need to get a health certificate for Fox. We need to do our health certificates because there's now a health visa certificate program for the Bahamas. Um, it's $40 per person and you do that in advance. Um, you upload your COVID test to that so it makes it super easy. What else is on the list? Um, where, to, where to begin? Um, Davey has his head in about 50 different jobs at the moment. That's why I'm sitting here talking to you guys. Um, he's actually in the starboard engine room. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for next week's episode because that engine actually is coming out. So that's gonna be one of our big final jobs before we can go anywhere. And then of course oil changes once it's back in and functioning. So we're working really hard to get the last few bits and pieces finished and of course looking for a weather window. So we're super excited. Um, I just want to take this moment and say a massive thank you to all of our patrons. Um, we appreciate it and we couldn't do it without you. If you aren't a patron and you do want to become one, I'm going to put the link below. Um, feel free to check it out. I have been starting to do some more posts on there for you guys. Um, some captain's logs for our higher patrons and then some general patron posts once a week. So thank you very much. Also thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We're almost at 23,000 subs. It's awesome. So thank you guys. So let's check out Davey. So how's it going back down there? It's going good guys. Uh, this motor's coming out so stay tuned for next week. We'll pull this out and I'll show you why. <laughs> 